Welcome to the Pulse with Peter B. I'm your host, Peter Biancomano. Let's get you to the pulse on everything you need to know. And we're here at the beautiful Placa Suvlaki, located at 62 Newark Street. You got to come on by and try the fair and just have a good time because we're definitely going to have a good time in this segment because we are joined by none other than a Hoboken legend. I'm actually nervous about this segment. And that is my very, very good friend. Friend, Mr. Joe Barry. Joe, it is so good having you on the show. Thank you so much, Pete. Exactly. So, yes. Joe, you have a long history here in Hoboken Correct. Uh, in terms of housing and development. Right. I was just wondering if you wanted to explain to the audience how you co-founded Applied Housing Management with your father and took it over. Of course. Yeah. Uh, I was originally graduated as a lawyer from Rutgers. And I worked as a, um, an attorney in legal services for the poor in Newark. Mm. But I got very interested in, uh, in uh, housing in Newark at the time. And my father was uh, unemployed at the time, and he was, but he was a very good union organizer. So we put together a company and we started in Newark with some new programs that I knew because of my training, mm. right? Uh, I have to describe what was happening in the cities at that time. The cities in the early 70s were losing their employment. They were losing their factories. They were, no one knew it, but they were in a process of redeveloping all the cities. And, uh, we did some work in Newark on rehab, but it was failing. The city was failing too fast. Mm. I represented an engineering firm here in Hoboken called Mayo Lynch. Yeah. Yes. Sure. And uh, when I came here to represent them, I noticed this city was the perfect place to do rehabilitation of the failing old buildings because there was a new program called Project Rehab for the cities because they were in such bad shape. And the federal government would back up your, the, your loan. You could borrow money on the credit of the federal government. And they would also subsidize the people that would come back to the apartment after you rehabilitated them. So it's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, and that's so important for the audience to know, uh, yeah. folks. I mean, yeah. Joe has helped out uh, through his company, obviously, so many low to moderate income families. The Latino and the Latina population here benefited right. from Joe's rehabilitation of properties. I mean, uh, residents of your buildings were living in a renovated housing at a right. very, very low cost because of your vision. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, they, we still are the, probably uh, have the greatest number of Hispanic people in our buildings in the city, in the, the population. Yeah. So, because they stayed. Uh, and I started to, uh, we actually started to rehab in the early 70s. We did about in Hoboken roughly 2,000 units, which at that time was probably 10% of the units in the city. And we would take the old buildings, relocate the people out of them to existing building, other existing buildings, and then take them back back after the rehabilitation. Right. Out of subsidy. That's a so it was a great, great uh, hope for this hope yeah. for the city. Mm -hmm. And then and, sorry, I'm yeah. I don't mean to interrupt you. Uh, now the company is is Iron State Development, I believe, right, correct? Right. And your boys run it, Michael and David, correct? Right. right. Um, so, folks, you know, uh, why does Iron State and Apply sound so familiar? Because you moved into a more of the luxury apartments as well after helping out so many poor and vulnerable. Right. You know, if the shipyard, Port Liberté, is all under the uh, Barry uh, right. company. So, I yeah. bought the shipyard in 1991. Four one million point one million one point million <laughs> one million dollars Sorry. one million dollars for the shipyard. That's in how bad in ninety one. That's how bad things were. But Joe, you rehabilitated that area. Yes, where it's it's the premier 
uh, location where people want to live now. Of course, we built. I built those all those the buildings called the shipyard complex, yeah. and uh, many other buildings in town. Uh, and I think that the rehabilitation was key to establishing a base, at least for the people who weren't wealthy enough to live in, you know, the, the expensive apartments or to buy a house. Right. Let's put it that way. Absolutely. And uh, there's one thing I wanted to clarify. Yeah, sure. The city of Hoboken has lived for about 50 years with the reputation that the landlords were setting fires and burning out people. And there is a ton of miscommunication about that. And, yes. and Mr. Barrett, I, please, the floor is yours. I uh, think it's, it's very, very important that you yes, clarify Yes, it's, it's important to say that everyone, there were fires because the buildings were deteriorating terribly. And in those days, the way you made heat in the kitchen and heat in the apartment was called gas on gas. Do you right. know that term? I do. Yeah. So you had an open gas flame next to the kitchen stove and you had uh, uh, gas pipes all through the building uh, which would get leaks and so on and so forth so the in the electrical system was antiquated mm. so you had shorts and so on and so forth so fires were common as the building became more common as the building is deteriorated more and the Later yuppies who came in, this is really, really a, a, a shifting of, it's kind of a psychological thing. The later yuppies who came in who could afford to live in the buildings and displaced the people who were there because the landlords had money to fix. The yuppies were kind of guilty about the displacement of poor people in the building. So they came up with this theory that it it's was all narrative. the landlord's fault. Yeah, it was a false narrative. That's yeah, exactly false narrative. Yeah, exactly. And they made a movie on it called Delivered Vacant. I, I did hear about it. There was a yeah. movie called Delivered Vacant, which was an absolute lie. And the implication was that landlords chased people away with fire so that they could rent to hire income people or rebuild the building. So I just want to make it very clear that in all of the fires, not one landlord arson was proven. And because there was so much publicity, they were investigated thoroughly up, up and behind. Yeah. Right. right. They were so, investigated yeah, thoroughly. So yeah. That's my statement for tonight. I appreciate that, Mr. Okay. Barry. And, and, and you're always welcome to come here and Thank clear you, the Pete. air. We have a lot of viewers here. All right. And for those people at home who might believe this false narrative that uh, Mr. Barry spoke about, I mean, the truth always hurts. Um, right. I mean, you know, here's a gentleman, and 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 again, I, I told you, you're a legend in my mind yeah. in this town, who has done nothing but help out the most vulnerable population in this town. And we're going to be interviewing people from the homeless shelter a little later yeah, on okay, to talk right. about vulnerability. And, you know, for your legacy to be dragged through the mud like that, yeah. it is beyond ridiculous. And I'm glad you can clear the air on this show. Okay, thank you so, so much. Absolutely, Joe. Feel free to come back anytime, okay? Okay, Pete. It is great to see you. Thank you. All right, folks, we do have to go to a quick commercial break. That's Joe Barry. Don't go anywhere, Joe. <laughs> All right, we will be right back. Peter Biancomano, your hostess with the mostess of The Pulse with Peter B. Folks, don't forget to go on our Facebook and our Instagram pages by searching The Pulse with Peter B. And like and follow us on each of those platforms. We're constantly updating those pages with previews of each week's segments and cool stories. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our email address at thepulsewithpeterb at gmail.com. Welcome back to The Pulse with Peter B. Still here at Plaka Suvlaki, located at 62 Newark Street. And the excitement in my voice is just a higher pitch than normal because we have an extremely special guest, 
all the way from Jersey City. I mean, uh, hop, skip, and a jump away, as I like to say. And that is the councilwoman at large, Miss Amy the Deges. Welcome back to The Pulse. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. And very impressive how you uh, named the restaurant so quickly, too. A lot of practice, trust me. A lot of practice. Yeah. It's a tongue twister. It is a tongue twister. Not bad for an Italian, huh? No, no, not at all. Not <laughs> exactly. bad at all. It must be good. Exactly. And and don't be fooled, Amy's half Italian, I believe? Half Italian. Exactly. Italian That's her better half. No, I'm just kidding out there. <laughs> It's the spicier hat. <laughs> exactly. I absolutely love it. Well, Amy, the last time you were on the show, you were a relatively new council person yes. in Jersey City, just a few months on the job. Yes. And now it's been a couple of, about almost two years, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, two years. Absolutely. I was just wondering if you can talk about some of the progress that's uh, happening in uh, the second largest city in the States. Yeah. Well, I, I still think it's the first and <laughs> a ton of progress. We have meetings every two weeks and it feels like they get longer and longer, but it's all good stuff. Um, you know, I feel like we're doing a lot of repairs to infrastructure and street redesign. I feel like we're investing in our communities in a really healthy, sustainable way, promoting affordability, sustainable housing. We're going after grant money, which is so key. You know, it's going to keep tax dollars uh, low or tax uh, revenue low, but it helps us generate an income from other sources to promote more workforce development, healthier JC tactics and all that good stuff. Exactly. Uh, and one of the issues that was, that is very prevalent, and we actually just covered it on the Pulse last week, uh, we had the president of the Friends for Liberty State Park, Mr. Yes. Sam Pesson, oh, he's the cutest guy in the world, right? Um, yeah. You know, he's discussing how there are, there's a little opposition with trying to take over some of his land to create sporting complex or stadiums or yeah. fields or something like that. I was just wondering if you want to tell the owners where you stand on that issue and, yeah. um, you know, why people like Sam shouldn't worry about it. Absolutely. And, and Sam is cute, but he's a fireball. <laughs> he really uh, you is. Know, and, and if you get him going, he's going to go and I would not want to fight him. I, you I, know, I definitely I would not. I was scared. I was intimidated. Yeah, I, <laughs> uh, a great man and the best advocate for that park, but also the best collaborator because he allows the community to really understand that park's needs. And I do see, and I live close by, like people in the area don't utilize that park as this open public facility all the time. They take walks there, uh, they enjoy the skyline, but there can be more there. However, I really do advocate for doing this slowly and with mm. a lot of community input. I don't, not for the big amphitheater, I'm not for yeah. the big concert hall, I don't want uh, you know, people going and playing big shows there, although they'll be in my backyard and I can hear them outside. I don't want that. And I don't think the community wants that either. So although it needs some renovations, some upgrades, some more field space and things to bring families down there to have more recreational activities, you don't need to privatize it. You don't need to sell it off to developers. So stick with Sam on that. And uh, he'll be, you know, uh, against a lot of the new stuff, but I think he'll come around, especially once he works with the community and hears that things are for, they're inclusive and for us and not for big developers. That's yeah, unbelievable. It really, really is. Another uh, issue that is, not issue, but another uh, topic of conversation that has come up is your mayor, uh, Mayor Stephen Phillip, has announced he is the first person to announce his run for governor of yeah. the state of New Jersey, following in Brett Schundler's uh, footsteps. I yeah, believe you're he was right. the last Jersey City Ooh, yeah, Mayor that right. tried that. Yeah. Exactly. It wasn't that successful. Uh, we'll see if um, Mayor Phillip is a little more successful than Brett was. Yeah. Um, what do you think about his announcement? It's yeah. about two years before the election. So yeah. he definitely did it early. He did it early. And I think that was the right thing to do. Because I think you really show your commitment. Everybody was speculating. Is he? Isn't he? He's like, yes, I am. And this is why. And, you know, I think his leadership in Jersey City as mayor, his expertise on policy, his track record has really shown that he's going to be a great governor. Right. I real, I truly believe that. And I'll speak to some of those achievements, but having a Jersey City guy in Trenton, that's huge. And I think for everybody in Hudson County, we want one of our own down there. We right. understand how tough we are up here, what we deal with, you know, the population density, what we have to do with limited resources and funding. Bringing that down to Trenton, uh, knowing that this man has dealt with every stakeholder from every level, every background, conservative, liberal, moderate, has brought people together and has brought progress. That's what we need down in Trenton. I'm really proud that he's doing that, proud to support him. And I think we're gonna get down there. Well, I absolutely love it. We do have to take a quick commercial break. Somebody's gotta pay the bills. Pay uh, the bills. Councilwoman, exactly. When we come back more with Councilwoman at large from Jersey City, Amy DeGees, you're not gonna wanna miss it. We'll be right back. Welcome to Hudson River Care and Counseling. 
Hello, I'm Dr. Pam Pater Ennis, the CEO and founder of Hudson River Care and Counseling with over 30 years of clinical social work experience in therapy. We are a progressive counseling and coaching practice with a diverse team that brings a holistic approach to clients. We offer support both in person and through digital platforms such as telehealth. Consider us a safe haven that you can trust with care for your mental health needs. Visit our website to set up a consultation today. Welcome back to The Pulse with Peter Urbain, and we're still here with one of my favorite elected officials in all of Hudson County. Sorry to make you jealous out there, everybody. And that is the councilwoman at large, Amy DeGeese of Jersey City. Great to see you. Great seeing you again. Great. Thank you for staying through the commercial, I should no, say. No. Uh, hey, I'm here. I want you to pay your bills so I can come back. <laughs> exactly. And you're invited back at any time. Thank you. Could we talk it's about how hot Jersey City is, by the way? It is hot. It is like hot. And now we're not talking weather-wise, because we, we had squatches, as we say in Hudson squatches. County, right? <laughs> Um, but Danny Hurley, a Jersey City boy, has just won a national championship with UConn. Yep. And of course, last year, St. Peter's made that huge run to the Elite Eight, which is yeah. Holloway, who now coaches my alma mater at Seton Hall. Um, so, you know, Danny Hurley's the son of Bob Hurley, of course, uh, famous uh, St. Anthony's coach for so many years. How proud of you to see these notable Jersey City residents do great things. I love whenever our name is in the paper, our news, and obviously for good reason but we build them strong in Jersey City, you know, mm -hmm. men and women, but our athletic capabilities and that family line, they are tremendous. They're such great advocates for the community too. They run programs for the youth. So I'm so, so incredibly proud of them. Really, really is. Well, Amy, you know, just a few months ago, uh, and I'm sure it was probably like the longest time of, of your life, I'm sure you felt as, you were in the news a lot. Yes. You know, with, with a variety of, of, of issues that came up and so on and so forth. And personally, I thought you were treated very unfairly. I actually ran into you on Washington Street. I don't know if you remember that. Yes, and I do. I was like, and I was like, listen, I, I just think you're being treated unfairly. Thank you. You know, obviously you made a mistake. I think it's it's very important that the audience knows that. Absolutely. Um, but unfortunately, I just felt like they were, many people were throwing problems at you that weren't your fault. I was just wondering if you wanted to comment on yeah, that. It yeah, was, it feels like 10 years ago and 10 minutes ago. <laughs> right. It was a, you know, really kind of traumatizing time for a lot of reasons and just dealing with that situation and then what came on top of it was not easy, you know, getting death threats and, you know, right. and just people digging in your lives and made you feel in some ways that this is people's personal reality TV show. They want to know your ins and outs. They want to see the inside of your home. And I found that really violating and really hard to do my work, which I know is in the public sphere, but I prefer to be a private person in things. You know, I'll do public work, but I want to go home at the end of the day. And, you know, things were addressed. I never lived in affordable housing. Uh, College Towers was not affordable housing at all. That still this gets- a complete lie. <laughs> uh, that still gets uh, repeated. My salary, I, I think I'm missing a few paychecks if that is my accurate salary and among other things. But I'm really happy that, you know, we've powered through this. Absolutely. Um, trying to work with communities out there to make, you know, street safety a huge priority, not just for myself, but for every job driver, cyclist, and pedestrian throughout Hudson County, especially in Jersey City. So it's really helped me reevaluate re um, what's important and redesign and moving forward, showing our resiliency and showing that model to other people to work through, power through things, uh, advocate for yourself and others, be kind to people because things come full circle um, and, and keep it going. Exactly. And you certainly learn from that experience yes. and you're bettering yourself from that experience. Absolutely. And that's the most important things, folks. All right. I want to move on because I didn't even want to bring it up. So let's just really quickly talk about your old man. Of course, our current county executive, Mr. Tom DeGee, is retiring at the end of yeah. his term. I mean, it's like you want to talk about a legend. I mean, you know, it's a legend yeah. who's leaving us. How excited are you for him to start his retirement? I'm so excited. And he's like a senior on spring break right now. This is senior <laughs> spring. He's like growing a beard, he's wearing his T-shirts. But I've only known my dad in the capacity as a public servant. You mm. know, he was on council. I grew up in City Hall and I was with all of the campaigns and elections. So to see an ending and to see that it was on his own terms, it was done gracefully. Right. It wasn't, he wasn't pushed out. He wasn't sick. Uh, it was okay. I'm done. And I'm passing the baton and, you know, seeing that like Craig guy, the guy who was at the seat of the table with him making really pivotal moves to bring Hudson County where it is, is the one that's going to bring this forward. So he's going to build on what we've had for the past decade and 
create more. So I'm so proud of my dad. I don't think he realizes what he's done. Right. People are now going over his accomplishments with the community college where I work, the Hudson County Schools of Technology, uh, parks and infrastructure. And he's like, oh, wow, I just wanted to do that because it was the right thing. And it really it's such a human model to follow, like be mm -hmm. humble and work hard. And we want to wish uh, County Executive DeGis uh, the best of luck in your retirement. Thank yes. you for all your years of public service. Yes. Uh, and, and if you have any hobbies for him, he's going to need them. <laughs> exactly. Just so he doesn't drive his daughter crazy, right? <laughs> yes. Please help me out here. Please exactly. help me. Well, Councilwoman at large, Amy DeGis, it is such a pleasure having you on. Oh, thank you for pleasure. coming by. And oh, maybe we'll come you. visit you in Jersey City one of these days. I would think? love that. We got a lot going on. So exactly. we like that a lot. Thanks again. Really appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. All right, folks, we will be right back. Peter Biancomano back with you. Don't forget to watch us on cable access every Sunday and Monday at 9 a.m. Optimum Channel 18, Files Channel 46, and Comcast Channel 190. Also on Sunday mornings at 9.30 a.m., you can watch our show on our YouTube channel, and you can also binge watch all of our old shows. Who doesn't want to keep watching The Pulse with Peter B? We'll see you there. Welcome back to The Pulse with Peter B. And on this episode, folks, we have had some heavy, heavy hitters. We started with Joe Barry, followed by Councilman at Large, Amy DeGees. And who's to say that our third segment is not bringing in the thunder, as they like to say. And that is, uh, let's see, I love to make you smile. And we are honored <laughs> to be joined by one of our volunteers at the Hoboken Homeless Shelter, Lauren Parisi. That's the last time I'm going to say your name. LP, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and exactly. just wonderful to be here and join you. Exactly. Exactly. And we're, we're so, so honored for you to be here. And I'm probably going to say this another 16 times uh, during the segments, but thank you for all of your service to the, Humble, uh, to the Hoboken Homeless Shelter. It's an honor to be here, a pleasure to do what we do at the shelter and, you know, happy to talk about everything we do with you. Exactly. I appreciate that. And of course, folks, we did have Mark Singleton, who I believe is the vice president of the board uh, on the shelter and Laura, who uh, was also a board member, I believe. Um, and now we're honored to have you, LP. Thank you so much. There's big steps to follow, though. Oh, yes. I'm going to try my best. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Talk to me about why you wanted to volunteer at the Hoboken Homeless Shelter. So the first time I started volunteering, it was actually when I first moved to Hoboken, which was many, many years ago. And I wanted to get involved in the community and meet like-minded and like-hearted people. And I became friends with all of these fine folks. And over the years, my involvement has grown. Um, I actually hosted their 80s trivia events during the pandemic. Mm. So we did it virtually. I'm actually a local event and trivia host. So I stepped in for that. And then when they said they were coming back in person for the 80s dance, I said, sign me up. I'm on that committee. Exactly. I like the way she plugged herself there too. So I appreciate that. Where can people find you hosting trivia? So I am personally with Trivia AD. I okay. have been hosting trivia with them for over a decade now. And I'm at Black Bear every Wednesday. Uh, Dave JC is a great guy, the owner of Black Bear, a very, very good friend of the show and a very good friend of mine. Dave, I love you. All right. Uh, why do you think it's so important for others to get involved in the Hoboken Homeless Shelter besides all of those obvious reasons? So for me, this is very personal and very near and dear. I think that everyone deserves to have a home somewhere they could feel safe and somewhere they could be proud of. So the shelter not only provides daily services, but they housed permanently over 200 people last mm. year. So wow. that's something that's impressive and just amazing. That is amazing. It absolutely is. And we thank you for your service there. And one of the things that we spoke about with Mark Singleton and Laura before when they were on the show was, it seems like there's an influx of volunteers around Thanksgiving. Everybody tries to do well um, and, and volunteer during Thanksgiving, I think Mark said a comment that there's like 10 times more the volunteers on Thanksgiving than there are people to feed or something like that. So that's, that's amazing. why do you think it's important that people volunteer all year round? Well, I think it's important to volunteer all year round, not just Thanksgiving, but please do not stop coming Thanksgiving as well. <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, Everybody stay home coming. on Thanksgiving. Um, no. no, keep it coming. <laughs> um, the, I think it's the most important is because the shelter does so much, again, daily. So they housed 50 
guests per night. Mm. And then they serve 500 meals per day. And then also they are the only shelter in Hudson County that provides shower services seven days a week, a thousand showers per week. Wow. And that is all, you know, there's manpower behind that. And that's where, and woman power. And everyone has to come and show up and give what they can to help these people, you know, succeed. Well, again, and again, here's about this, the fourth or fifth time. Thank you so much for all of your service. We do have to take a quick commercial break, but you do have a wonderful fundraiser that's coming up oh, in the next amazing. few weeks, a, a yes. week from a little, six days away from today. Yes. Um, you know, I can't believe it. When the sun's out, it's like, you know, you forget the days, correct? The days keep flying by for me as well, but this is one that I'm counting down to days with excitement and I cannot wait. It is our 80s dance party. It is going to be May 6th. Okay. And it is at 7 p.m. at the Hoboken Elks Club. And it's going to be dancing, costume contest, and there's going to be food and drink from local vendors. It's just going to be super fun. And uh, everyone should just come out and support. And it's an amazing time for an amazing organization. Well, we're going to get to that on the second, uh, uh, after the commercial break, in the second part sure. of this segment. So stay with us. We Hanging have to out. pay the bills, right? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, more with JP? LP. <laughs> I knew I was going to get that wrong with LP. It's she two letters. Me. Let's she, I know. LP. She corrected me right away uh, with yes. LP yeah. after this commercial break. Folks, yeah. you're not going to want to miss it. Welcome back to The Pulse with Peter B. And she was almost out of breath before we went to commercial break because she thought the show was ending. And I was like, no, no. And then she made me mess up her name. I called her JP. I got uh, people telling me it's HP. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's LP. Yeah. And thank LP you for staying. LP and Peter B. Let's do uh, this. Well, look at her. She wants to take over. <laughs> no. Listen, I can call my mic guy, you know, and create new flags. It looks so beautiful as is. We it can't is. mess with perfection. You know, and I appreciate that. Yeah. Huh? You know, I'm getting like hot over here. This is so great. <laughs> All right, LP. <laughs> Um, Let's go. You spoke about the Back to the 80s fundraiser that you guys are having. And, yes. uh, you know, I was like, take a breath. We have a, you know, a whole other half segment to talk about it. I'm just really excited. I, I want everyone to come and have I, a good time. I'm excited for yeah. you. So you said it's on Saturday, May 6th. Yes. Over at the Hoboken Oaks Club, 10th and Washington, of course. Yes, that is. Um, and the time again? It is at 7 p.m. Starts at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. So talk to me about this fundraiser. Uh, is this the spring fundraiser for the shelter? Because I know you guys do a gala every year, if I'm not mistaken. And and you're now doing a spring fundraiser, which I think you always done, if I'm not mistaken. So we have a spring fundraiser, mm -hmm. um, which has been 80s themes because the shelter was founded in 1982. Fabulous mm -hmm. year. Um, so that goes along with that. Um, but there is uh, a Hoboken, fi Hoboken 5K. That's and true. that is in the fall. And then also there is the, uh, the auction, which is in December. And that's for the holiday season. So it's good for gift giving and grabbing yeah. those last minute gifts. And you know she's excited when she's moving to shoulders. Uh -huh. you know, I like yeah. that. I absolutely do. All right. What can people expect when going into this fundraiser on the 6th? Oh, just an amazing tubular awesome time. Tubular. Can yeah. you explain what that means? I would uh, think, so I am a child of the <laughs> 80s. I would say tubular is a little bit more than awesome, but not just like super West Coast vibes kind of deal. But it's going to be fun, amazing dance party, costumes, everything. All right. Do you want to, you know, ruin it for the audience of how you're going to be dressed? I am going to be dressed in 80s fashion. Oh, <laughs> the reason that is, was a little tease. the reason is, <laughs> is because I am going to actually be the host of the costume contest and I want to see everyone bring it and I'm going to make sure that I can look over the crowd and be blending it. And that's actually a good follow-up question. It, um, do you usually change the themes in your spring fundraiser? Is this the first time you did the back to the 80s type of party? Nope, it's, it's how, not. It's how oh. we roll, yeah. It's, it's how, how, how you is. roll every yeah. year. Yeah. Wow, okay. It's, well. a nod, it's a nod to the 82. So. It's a nod to she keeps talking about 82. I'm an 80s baby as well. So. Oh, amazing. Mid 80s though, so yeah. you know, I mean. Um, and I think it's 
time for you to explain to the audience how they can get tickets. Sure. You know, um, and if you said that there was going to be uh, raffle items, I believe you said all kinds of things. Okay. Yeah. yeah the floor is yours, please. So um, the way to get tickets is basically you can check out our social media sites, and also you should check the website um, at the shelter. And there also is a website dedicated just to the event, which I don't know if it's going to be at the bottom, so I'm not going to point and look crazy. Huh? But um, you're making more work for it. That's okay. <laughs> but if that, you can just check the shelter website, and you can check out all the information there, and also check the amazing throwback posts on social media that we're doing, 80s inspired. 80s inspired. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love it. Folks, I mean, why not? I mean, there are plenty of residents in this town who were born in the 80s. And even the people that weren't born in the 80s, why wouldn't you want to reminisce about how the 80s was? I mean, you know, definitely get out there to the Hoboken Elks Lodge on 10th and Washington on Saturday, May 6th. Got to see our friend LP, which, which he's going to be dressed as. <laughs> but you're going to want to come in costume so LP can judge you and what? Give a great score? Oh, there's going to be tons of prizes. I love yeah. it. I love Amazing it. prizes donated by many of the local organizations and businesses here in town and That's our fabulous. surrounding. Well, good luck. Thank you Thank so Thank you much. for your service. Thank you for having me. It of was course, a pleasure. Of course. And we hope to see you on very soon. Yeah, and I, I hope feel like the shelter keeps sending us different people here. Yeah. Well, I'm beginning to think it's me. I do know it. And I hope that we see everyone at the event. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank LP. you. Really appreciate Thank it. you. All right, folks. Join us next week for The Pulse on everything you need to know. I'm Peter Biancomano. I hope you have a great week, everybody. Thank you.